If you're using fiber in your network infrastructure, then obviously you're communicating by light. The digital signals are converted to light. They're sent down the length of the fiber. And on the other side, the light is converted back into digital signals. Well, there's some obvious advantages for doing this. One of the big ones in a high security environment is that nobody can easily tap into that connection without you knowing that it's happening. A tap of a fiber connection is one that will have a noticeable drop in the signal. That's very easy to monitor. And and because there's no type of RF signal that's emanating from the wireless connection, you can't put equipment around the fiber to determine what might be going through that connection. Fiber signals are also very slow to degrade. So you can send the fiber off very, very, very long distances. These are things you can't do with copper because copper has a limited distance that you could send. So you might go between buildings. You might go across the entire city on one strand of fiber. It makes it very, very efficient to be able to communicate across very long distances. Your fiber is also immune to any type of radio interference. Interference that might be coming from microwaves, that might be coming from wireless networks, from your cell phone. None of that has any impact on a fiber connection because it's light that's going from one side to the other. These are great for environments that might be electrically noisy. They might be in a manufacturing environment. There might be a lot of radio signals. Those are perfect environments to use a fiber network connection. You generally see two types of fiber that you are installing. One is a multi-mode fiber, and one is a single-mode fiber. And when you're plugging into a piece of networking equipment, it will tell you the type of fiber that's required for the interface that you're plugging into. With a multi-mode fiber, you have this particular kind of scenario going on with the light that's going through. The light goes into one end, and the light might take many different paths to get all the way through that fiber. And it's bouncing off the different sides of the fiber that's going through all the way to the other end. It's not a single line that's going through. It's this bouncing that takes place as the light is going back and forth. It's multiple modes as it's passing through there. You often see multi-mode fiber being used for short haul communication. In the fiber world, that means anything that's about two kilometers or shorter. You're usually using multi-mode fiber inside of a building, for instance, or to go between different buildings that are right next to each other. You can't go all the way across town with multi-mode fiber because this fiber bouncing back and forth degrades the signal as it goes longer and longer all the way down the line. But you can also use very expensive light sources for this. One of the challenges with going so far in a distance over fiber is that the light has to make it to the other side. And for multi-mode fiber, you can use lights like LEDs, which are relatively inexpensive. They're a specific kind of LED, but it's a lot different than a single mode fiber, which we'll look at in just a moment. So we're able to keep the cost down of our network equipment because the light that's being emitted over this fiber is using relatively inexpensive components. Single mode fiber, as you can tell by this picture, is very different. The light goes in one side, and it is a direct line all the way down. There's not a lot of bouncing off of walls with single mode fiber. It is one mode from one side to the other. We generally see single mode fiber being used for very long range communication. And in the world of fiber, that can be up to 100 kilometers before you would ever need to stop regenerate the signal, repeat the signal, or process it in some way before then sending it down another 100 kilometers. So when we're thinking about the fiber that's in the ground that's used by network service providers, maybe fiber that you're using to go very, very, very long distances, it's using single mode fiber to make that happen. The light source in single mode fiber is relatively expensive. We're very often using lasers in single mode fiber because we need a very, very strong light to get from one side of this single mode fiber to the other. And because of that, equipment that we're going to purchase to go these very, very long distances are going to be a lot more expensive. The fiber itself is more expensive, and the components used to send the light through the fiber are more expensive. And that's why you tend to only use single mode fiber if you have a real need because there is that extra cost associated with those. So as you're planning to connect your different buildings or different parts of your buildings together, you'll need to think about the type of fiber connections that you'll need. Will you be using multi-mode fiber or single-mode fiber?